Part 21 of the Military Journals of Two Private Soldiers, 1758-1775. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by FNH. The Military Journals of Two Private Soldiers, 1758-1775, by Abraham Tomlinson. Part 21. Concord, April 23, 1775. I, James Marr, of Lawful Age, testify and say that in the evening of the 18th instant, I received orders from George Hutchinson, adjutant of the 4th Regiment of Regular Troops stationed at Boston, to prepare and march, to which orders I attended and marched to Concord, where I was ordered by an officer with about 100 men to guard a certain bridge there. While attending that service, a number of people came along, in order, as I suppose, to cross said bridge, at which time a number of the regular troops first fired upon them. James Marr Medford, April 25, 1775 I, Edward Thoroton Gould, of His Majesty's own regiment of foot, being of lawful age, do testify and declare that on the evening of the 18th instant, under the orders of General Gage, I embarked with the light infantry and grenadiers of the line, commanded by Colonel Smith, and landed on the marshes of Cambridge, from whence we proceeded to Lexington. On our arrival at that place, we saw a body of provincial troops, armed to the number of about sixty or seventy men. On our approach they dispersed, and soon after firing began, but which party fired first I cannot exactly say, as our troops rushed on shouting and huzzaring previous to the firing, which was continued by our troops so long as any of the provincials were to be seen. From thence we marched to Concord. On a hill near the entrance of the town we saw another body of provincials assembled. The light infantry companies were ordered up the hill to disperse them. On our approach they retreated towards Concord. The grenadiers continued the road under the hill towards the town. Six companies of light infantry were ordered down to take possession of the bridge which the provincials retreated over. The company I commanded was one. Three companies of the above detachment went forward about two miles. In the meantime the provincial troops returned to the number of about three or four hundred. We drew up on the Concord side of the bridge. The provincials came down upon us, upon which we engaged and gave the first fire. This was the first engagement after the one at Lexington. A continued firing from both parties lasted through the whole day. I myself was wounded at the attack of the bridge, and am now treated with the greatest humanity, and taken all possible care of by the provincials at Medford. Edwin Thoroton Gould, Lieutenant, King's Own Regiment. Province of Massachusetts Bay, Middlesex County, April 25, 1775. Lieutenant Thoroton Gould, aforenamed, personally made oath to the truth of the foregoing declaration by him subscribed before us. Tad Mason, Josiah Johnson, Simon Tufts, Justices of the Peace for the County aforesaid, Quorum Unis. Province of Massachusetts Bay, Charleston, S.S. I, Nathaniel Gorham, notary and tabellian public by lawful authority, duly admitted and sworn, hereby certify to all whom it may or doth concern, that Taddeus Mason, Josiah Johnson, and Simon Tufts, Esquires, are three of His Majesty's Justices of the Peace, Quorum Unis, for the county of Middlesex, and that full faith and credit is and ought to be given to their transactions as such, both in court and out. In witness whereof, I have hereto unto affixed my name and seal, this twenty-sixth day of April, Anno Domini, 1775. Nathaniel Gorham, Notary Public, L.S. All of the above depositions are sworn to before justices of the peace, and duly attested by the notary's public, in the manner of the last one. In Provincial Congress, Watertown, April 26, 1775. To the inhabitants of Great Britain. Friends and fellow subjects, hostilities are at a length commenced in this colony by the troops under the command of General Gage, and it being of the greatest importance that an early, true, and authentic account of this inhuman proceeding should be known to you, the Congress of this colony has transmitted the same, and from want of a session of the Honourable Continental Congress, think it proper to address you on the alarming occasion. 
By the clearest depositions relative to this transaction, it will appear that on the night preceding the 19th of April instant, a body of the King's troops, under the command of Colonel Smith, were secretly landed at Cambridge, with an apparent design to take or destroy the military and other stores provided for the defence of this colony, and deposited at Concord. That some inhabitants of the colony, on the night aforesaid, while travelling peaceably on the road between Boston and Concord, were seized and greatly abused by armed men, who appeared to be officers of General Gage's army. That the town of Lexington, by these means, was alarmed, and a company of the inhabitants mustered on the occasion. That the regular troops, on their way to Concord, marched into said town of Lexington, and the said company, on their approach, began to disperse. That, notwithstanding this, the regulars rushed on with great violence, and first began the hostilities, by firing on said Lexington company, whereby they killed eight, and wounded several others. That the regulars continued their fire, until those of said company, who were neither killed nor wounded, had made their escape. That Colonel Smith, with the detachment, then marched to Concord, where a number of provincials were again fired on by the troops, two of them killed, and several wounded, before the provincials fired on them and that these hostile measures of the troops produced an engagement that lasted through the day, in which many of the provincials and more of the regular troops were killed and wounded. To give a particular account of the ravages of the troops as they retreated from Concord to Charleston would be very difficult, if not impracticable. Let it suffice to say that a great number of the houses on the road were plundered and rendered unfit for use. Several were burnt women in childbed were driven by the soldiery naked into the streets, old men peaceably in their houses were shot dead, and such scenes exhibited as would disgrace the annals of the most uncivilized nations. These, brethren, are marks of ministerial vengeance against this colony, for refusing with her sister colonies a submission to slavery. But they have not yet detached us from our royal sovereign. We profess to be his loyal and dutiful subjects, and so hardly dealt with as we have been, are still ready, with our lives and fortunes, to defend his person, family, crown, and dignity. Nevertheless, to the persecution and tyranny of his cruel ministry, we will not tamely submit, appealing to heaven for the justice of our cause, we determine to die or be free. We cannot think that the honour, wisdom, and valour of Britons will suffer them to be long inactive spectators of the measures in which they themselves are so deeply interested, measures pursued in opposition to the solemn protests of many noble lords, an express sense of conspicuous commoners whose knowledge and virtue have long characterised them as some of the greatest men in the nation, measures executing contrary to the interests, petitions, and resolves of many large, respectable, and opulent counties, cities, and boroughs in Great Britain, measures highly incompatible with justice, but still pursued with a specious pretense of easing the nation of its burdens, measures which, if successful, must end in the ruin and slavery of Britain, as well as the persecuted American colonies. We sincerely hope that the great sovereign of the universe, who hath so often appeared for the English nation, will support you in every rational and manly exertion with these colonies, for saving it from ruin, and that in a constitutional connection with the mother country we shall soon be altogether a free and happy people. Per order, Joseph Warren, President, P. T. End of Part 21 Recording by F. N. H. Please visit www.bookranger.co.uk dot uk okay.